In the quiet, serene villages of South Korea, a nightmare unfolded on the night of April 26, 1982. A man named Woo Bum Kon, a name that would soon be etched in infamy, was at the center of the horror. Wu was a troubled individual, a man burdened by the weight of a tumultuous past that would ultimately cascade into a deadly fury. On the surface, Wu appeared to be just like any other villager, but beneath that facade, a storm was brewing. The evening began with a simple quarrel with his girlfriend, a disagreement that sparked the fuse of his rage. But as the night wore on, that spark turned into a wildfire, engulfing Wu and pushing him over the edge. The peaceful silence of the evening was shattered as Wu's anger spiraled out of control, setting off a chain of events that would see the serene villagers descend into chaos. As the night fell, the unsuspecting villagers were about to witness a horror that would go down in history. What started as a domestic dispute soon turned into a rampage that would shock the world. In the quiet hours of April 26, 1982, Wu Bumkon's violent spree began. It was a night that would go down in infamy, a night that would send shockwaves through South Korea and beyond. Wu, a police officer, had a unique advantage. His position granted him access to weapons, and he exploited this to its horrifying potential. He began his rampage armed with two standard-issue rifles, seven hand grenades, and a considerable amount of ammunition. With this arsenal, he moved from village to village, his rage escalating with each passing hour. The terror he inflicted was indiscriminate and relentless. Men, women, children, none were spared from his wrath. The sheer scale of the carnage is hard to comprehend. In total, 57 people lost their lives that night, with a further 35 left injured. An entire community was left reeling, the tranquility of their rural life shattered in the most brutal way possible. As news of the attack spread, confusion and panic ensued. A cloud of fear hung over the region as people locked their doors and prayed for the nightmare to end. But for many, help would come too late. In just eight hours, Wu Bumkon had left a trail of death and devastation in his wake. The magnitude of his actions shook South Korea, and indeed the world, to its very core. A night of horror, a spree of violence that would forever be etched in history. As the sun rose, the magnitude of the horror became evident. The quiet morning revealed the chilling aftermath of a night that would forever be etched in South Korea's history. The once peaceful villages were now scenes of unimaginable horror. The authorities, still reeling from the shock, mobilized swiftly, their faces a grim reflection of the tragedy that had unfolded. The final toll was staggering. 56 lives were lost and countless others were left scarred, their world shattered in the wake of the spree. Families mourned, their grief echoing through the silent streets. The nation was in a state of shock, struggling to comprehend the scale of the devastation. In the aftermath, questions arose. How could such an event occur? Could it have been prevented? These questions led to a thorough examination of South Korea's law enforcement and gun control policies. The incident served as a catalyst sparking significant changes in these areas. The authorities implemented stricter gun control laws hoping to prevent such a tragedy from recurring. They also bolstered their crisis response mechanisms, aiming to improve their ability to manage critical situations. But as we all know, laws and policies can only do so much. The emotional wounds, the pain of loss, those are things that no law can erase. The survivors and the families of the victims had to find a way to move forward, to rebuild their lives from the rubble of the horror that was visited upon them. The spree ended with Wu Bum Kon's death, but the scars it left on the nation still remain, a stark reminder of the night that terror reigned in the peaceful villages of South Korea.